Recently I've been going back over Andrew Huang's series for producers one sample. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with that series. Absolutely phenomenal. And there's a few older episodes that I missed. And I recently came across The Count, which took me by surprise. If you don't know The Count, he's famed for his drum sample collection, but he's an amazing producer. And you can see that on his Instagram. And in this four producers, one sample video, he actually made something that was super, super chill, which I didn't expect. There was a couple of techniques in that video that I couldn't wait to try out. So why don't we jump straight into it? So one of the coolest things that I've seen the Count do inside Logic is take just a piano chord. I've pitched that. Very simple stuff. And then what you're gonna do is take the EQ and actually draw a pattern on the EQ. Notice that I've left this space here. That's gonna be for my kick drum. You get such a unique sound if you use like a live piano chord, because if you just play that once and look at how the frequency spectrum is so full, when we cycle through that with a filter, we're gonna get some really unique sounds that we're able to mold and manipulate amongst our rhythm. So underneath this, I found this like arpeggiated chord or a glissando. I'm not really sure what you would name it because I've slowed it down now. Just a lovely G major seven. And because I was already chopping things up by hand and feeling a little bit lazy, all I did was duplicate that first hit four times and then turn it down by hand each and every. And then that gave that kind of delayed feel again that I can control. I don't have to worry about filters or automation. Again, it's a little Neanderthal, it's a little bit slow, but that's the brilliant thing about production, right? You're in charge. And as long as you get from point A to point B, it doesn't really matter. So this is what we're left with with that sample. And then just pitched. That's just gonna play underneath our weird wobble piano thing. What was really cool is there was definitely some harmonics in the counts track that had been added after the sample. So I figured I would take that same sample, put it on a new track later in the song, and then do that same wobble thing. When you pair those together, you get a really nice harmonically rich pattern. And these are also being just sent to uh, the reverb send, which is just standard when you open up Ableton. I haven't changed anything. This was my drum track. And it's all about finding space within your mix. And I've used a few different methods. The first thing would be to add some live hats. This has come from an actual drum break as you can see here, and I've just chopped the hi-hat points out and then arranged them into this kind of bouncy, skippy pattern. And then I've added an electronic hi-hat just to give it a little bit more of an accent and a bounce on those off beats. They do play on the down beats, but as you can see here, they're sometimes faded in, so they're gonna be a little bit more subtle. It's just the same sample throughout. And all I've done is made that hi-hat nice and wide and then swept off some of the lows with the EQ8 there. Then we've got a nice big kick, all the same velocity with this guy. Just wanted to make him super hip hop, super punchy. Just a little bit of EQ utility to put it in mono. Remember when you're downloading those samples, oftentimes producers have already mixed and mastered those samples. So if they sound great, they sound like they're knocking, you don't have to edit them unless you want to. Then we've got just a nice snare. I'm playing this ahead of the beat. So it's got like a little bit of a rushed groove. So right now this is a really basic groove. What you wanna do is add some of that lush percussion stuff. I went about this a couple of ways. I started adding percussion to a sample track or to a drum rack just to find different parts of, I think the count sounds that I like that I could work with. So this first piece of percussion was actually a loop, as you can see here. And I was just looking for a sample that I felt could fit 
in this little space here. So I'm actually visually looking at my arrangement and going, okay, where's there some space that I can add any kind of rhythm? So there was this little space here. And part of one of the woodblock sound had this like little bit of noise, like studio noise in there. So I threw it into the drum rack, cut that woodblock sound off and just used the noise there. And I felt like that would make a really nice downbeat with the kick drum from time to time. And if we put it all together, you can listen out for it. I'm gonna need to turn this up because it's super quiet, but I just wanted some like rattly percussion. Oftentimes when a drummer records in a live room, there might be a tambourine present or there might be other percussion laying around and that will often get picked up into the mic and be kind of vibrating throughout the mix. So sometimes it's fun to just add a little bit of that noise to make it feel a little bit more human. And the same thing goes for this little triangle or muted chime pattern as well, double clicking on that. I don't want all of that noise. So when we select beats and pull that envelope right back, it's just gonna preserve that first part of the sound. And then I also found this lovely percussion block, which is super, super nice. Again, part of a longer rhythm, but I like to just chop it up and add just a tiny little bit of EQ there. Okay, so let's put all our drums together so you can kind of appreciate how we're filling in the gaps there and then we'll bring in our previous melodic content. With so much drums and soon to come percussion as well, you wanna make sure that you're separating your drums into sections of this frequency spectrum. I like to pan all of my individual one shots and loops into their individual places so they're not all overlapping the kick, snare drum and possibly bass and vocals that you might have in your track. From there, I'm gonna process those drums a little bit. I'm just doing a tiny bit of parallel compression. I've got a short on parallel compression itself. It'll take 50 seconds if you haven't seen that already. It's just a new chain with a glue compressor and some EQing going on and I blend that with the dry chain. On the dry chain, you can see Lifeline Expanse and that's adding just a little bit of fuzz and saturation to my drum kit. If we listen to it without, and then with. So it's just adding a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of brightness to that selection there. And then I just have some perk from the decap shaker sounds. I've just pitched this one shot a little different from each other. So we get a kind of push pull shaker effect. Later on in the song, we've got a little bit more percussion, just doubling up the snares with a clap here and then utilizing some of the hats from that count loop as well. You can see that I'm using the LFO device with the EQ and that just keeps the frequency moving throughout the loop. So it sounds a little bit more unique. I've got some lovely stuff like the Vibra Slap that I don't use that often. That can be a nice alternative to just like the normal crash symbol that you use. The occasional vocal shout or something like a flexitone. You can add all of these things in little bits of space of your percussion loops to just add a little bit more life and a reason for the listener to stick around. I just want to pause this episode really quick to tell you about today's sponsor, Distro Kid. And let's talk about goodies because as well as the playlist spotlight and wheel of playlists, which betters your chance to get on huge Spotify playlists and grow your audience. They also have other goodies that can enhance your music from Spotify Canvas Generator, where you can better generate some moving artwork for your Spotify released songs to lyrics, credits. And they also have Dave, which is an AI generated bot, which is really handy to tell you things about your track. If you're not too great at music theory like me, it's gonna tell you the BPM, the key of the song, but it's also gonna tell you how danceable the song is, which is always gonna help Help you better pitch to those editorial playlists. So if you want to use DistroKid and get 7% off your first year, then use the link in the description below. Let's jump back into it. In the beginning of this loop, I'm keeping the bass quite simple. Both of these bass patches are doing the same thing. One bass patch is made by Serum and it's just this SH Moog Saw bass. Shout outs to Synthaco, amazing tutorial channel. So this is just giving me that kind of Moog sound. I've got this sign like bass with just a little bit of attack and it's put in mono underneath and that's really gonna add all of that warmth and subbiness. Might not be able to hear that without headphones. Later on in the song, I just play legato notes, meaning longer notes, so that there's a little bit more presence notifying the listener that this is kind of the chorus section of the song.
I'm just using my old friend Waves R bass here. I haven't used R bass in a little bit, but this is great for pulling out the basses in small speakers, things like laptops, phones, etc. Now, another thing that I noticed in Count's episode of Four Producers was just the use of lots of ARP effects. So let's try and recreate that in Ableton. What have we got? Well, we've basically got uh, a serum patch. It's very simple with an arpeggiator MIDI device before it. Originally just playing these chords. And then when we add the arpeggiator on a 64th rate, so very, very quick. Now you can hear that I'm turning up and down the gain here. And it was a little bit of an accident because I actually took a loop of five clicks instead of four clicks, just one bar there. And that made the pattern quite interesting because as we'll add our delays on our returns, it will start to like kind of blur the line of where the loop occurs and it makes for a more interesting listen. After that serum preset though, we've got a bit of side chain on the kick and on the snare so it ducks whenever the kick or snare pattern happens. We've got the auto pan to keep it moving from ear to ear and then the EQ8 just to get rid of any muddy low notes. But really the beauty comes from the return. We had this return Return right up and on B return we've got utility for some width we're just boosting the gain a little bit Valhalla reverb with the mix all the way up we've got a delay and we're using the EQ8 and just kind of filtering those effects out and bring them back in just makes for a really really lovely listen especially under your drums And then finally, I've just got a little bendy sign for a little bit of feeling just to fill up those kind of mid frequencies. It's not doing too much, but I've got some Lifeline console on there to keep the notes bending a little bit and add a bit of noise to the track. And then shape a box to give it kind of a filtered bounce and then the sidechain compression just to the kick so that they don't play at the same time. The fresh air is bringing out more of the noise of that sound. Let's play just the A section, everything together. You also hear this wah guitar sample that I got from Splice underneath everything with a little bit of delay as well. So what are we changing when we go into the B section? Well, the B section is interesting because you want to take some things out of the drums. So you'll notice here that I'm taking out like a little wood block sample and I'm chopping the count percussion loop up a little bit more. So again, it's more staccato. It leaves more space for other things. I'm adding a little bit more percussion as we've already covered and I'm taking out the arpeggiated pattern that we heard and also this sine wave filling up the middle frequencies. That leaves me some space in the middle of the track and some higher treble frequencies. So the first thing that I added was just this basic string melody from Ableton Packs. It's absolutely free if you have Ableton 11 and I'm not doing too much process into this. And that kind of just plays over just adds more of like a hip hop feel to it. The route that I wanted to go with this track is if you were making something a little bit chilled with that hip hop feeling, but made for a vocalist. I wanted to fill up the sound spectrum with some effects. We've got these pads mixed with an E piano effect as well. Now you can hear that the pads are just your basic pad. There's nothing too much to write home about. Two serum presets, one with a line delay, one without. So one's central and one's really wide. But what's interesting is the E piano. Originally just playing in a pattern like this, but I wasn't too happy about it. Very, very boring. So I added the grain delay and then I attached an LFO device to spray and an LFO device to frequency. That gives us something a little bit more glossy. So again, just adds a little bit of this kind of ethereal vibe to the track. I don't know why I haven't done it yet, but I've always wanted to make like a kind of West Coast G-Funk synth and I felt like this was the place to do it. So this is a very easy patch to make. We're just gonna make a sawtooth wave and create a little bit of resonance with a filter here, making sure that mono is turned on so that you can't play multiple notes at once. And then a little bit of glide as well. That's pretty much the sound. And then I played in this melody.
And you can hear that it's being sent to a delay return there. But on the processing, I wanted to make it a little bit more unique. So we're adding the phaser and the chorus. And then filtering out some frequencies every now and then with the EQ8 and making sure we sidechain that to the kick as well. Now at this point, I really wanted to just try out Waves Harmony. I've got a whole video on Waves Harmony coming because I think this is a really exceptional plugin. I'm not a singer, as you guys probably know. I just sung this one constant note. Some dodgy stuff right there. On a separate track underneath, I've got this blank MIDI track and that's being sent to Waves Harmony. And that's actually triggering the chords that I want to be played. <laughs> And then some EQ and some Valhalla reverb as well. Let's just put those new melodies together so you can get a feeling for what's been changed. So you might ask why there's this little space deactivated here. I just wanted to switch up the arrangement and just have a new little bass line in this section. So we're just playing something a little bit different here. And we're dropping out some of the drums and some of the new elements. And that makes a good segue into reprising some of the elements you've heard before from the arpeggiators and a new pad as well. In my arrangement, I've just got little cues for the listener to signify that change is coming. That can be from anything like chimes that act as a transition to sections where my drums drop out and we hear the introduction of like a riser. And that's pretty much it from today's video, guys. A little bit of a messy project today, but always nice to try out some new techniques. Let me know what you think. And as always, if it was enjoyable, do give a little subscribe, especially if you've been putting it off. It greatly helps out the channel. I hope to see you over at the Discord or the Patreon. I've just added a new device at the Patreon that should help out with your mixing skills. But as always, guys, it's so wonderful to have you here. And I'll see you next time.